Hey, how you doing, him? This is I'm he. He and him. He and him. Yeah, Lee Gerstmann and Charles Train are on, on the he and him show. That's a great new name, he and <laughs> yeah. him show. That was yeah. yeah. Um, we could be either one. <laughs> you I'll know. be him, you're he. All right. <laughs> I'm going to watch Hee Haw. Well, I'm going to watch he, him, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah. It, 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 anyway, um, we're going to do um, a, a, a Charles pick today. We're going to yeah. do the Beals A Hard Day's Night. Oh, and, by the way, for anybody out there, the Beatles are still my favorite group of all time. Yeah. Don't, don't get it twisted and think it's Oasis. No. Oasis is a secondary copy of this band. There you go. I said it officially. Yeah. Well, ahead, Lee. Um, even though you picked it, I will say that in my earliest band, um, which really kind of didn't have a name much, um, and it was more like a collective where if I saw someone and asked them at that time, hey, do you want to play music with us? And they said, sure. They were a member of the band for that moment. But there were some people who were consistent. One of the ones who was consistent was a guy who was in my band. And um, there, there, there was some times when he and I might, argue about stuff musically and yell at each other and act like we <laughs> were all, all pissed off. But as soon as the songs are over and we put the instruments down, he might be like, hey, want to go to my house? We can play the Beatles, Hard Day's Night. And I'd be like, okay, sure. And and then it was, it was like, like, you know, um, because we knew the difference between we were doing music and then after we did music, it's like then we're just regular friends again. So we never really um, mixed the two. You know, that's, we we knew what was what. That's interesting that you bring that point up because I find even this day, for some reason, I, and I don't get why, I've never lost sight of, I can look at a piece of music and think it's fantastic. And you could say, this is absolute shit. And unlike, uh, apparently, most of the world, Lee gets that. A lot of people don't. If you like something I don't like, jam that shit, man. Jam that shit. Do whatever you do. Don't listen to what I have to say. What the hell difference does it make? Music is a subjective art, but... The Beatles were the greatest of all time. So, yeah, we're doing a hard day's night. Yeah, which, which, we which really I had, um, I think I might have, I'm not sure if I had both versions of the group or if I had neither. Because um, my friend had the album and I might have um, borrowed it from him. I think I did, and I'm not sure which version I borrowed, but somehow I the, heard all of the album. Hopefully it wasn't the U.S. version, because the U.S. version has the, and not that it's terrible, it's kind of like the Yellow Submarine soundtrack. It had this boy. That, that weird... It had this it's, boy. Well, yeah, that's, I don't know about that version per se, I'm not going to... Second Gesha. Yeah. I know there's also a version with the instrumental songs from the movie instead of I'm the not sure side that of had. English. I, I'm not sure that I had that, no. But uh, I only heard the actual EMI version, which has the full 14 tracks. This is the only Beatles album, period, that every song is written by Lennon and McCartney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are no Harrison songs. I, there are no covers. I only thought I saw 13 listed here, but whatever the 14th song is, 
I probably know it, so I'll be able to talk about it. Well, 13 or 14, but the typical EMI releases were 14. Yeah. With the exception of the White Album, which was a double. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm off a song. I, I, I don't it, know. But that's okay. I, um, I have no idea. It doesn't but, but matter. you're right. It doesn't matter if it's 13 or 14. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. This, But this is the EMI version we're reviewing today, not the yeah. U.S. version or with... This boy, which was yeah. um, actually a B side or a single B side, I think it was a B side. Yeah. Um, but this boy was in the film, yeah. but as an instrumental. Which, huh. by the way, some of the instrumental tracks on the movie, Jimmy Page played. That's cool. On that, but uh, there are no instrumentals in this version. This is the EMI version. And so you have original songs. There's going to be, I'll make point of when we stop with the actual film songs. Because I think. Okay. But that was featured in the film, which do you enjoy the film? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, when I was young, I, I, I thought, yeah, this is cool. You know. And a young, and a young Phil Collins was in the crowd. Before we knew, he would litter our brains with shitty music. Oh, but, yeah. All right. Right on. Yeah, How about you start? Okay. All right, man. Hard Day's Night. Yeah, what do you think of Hard Day's Night, the song? The title track from the beginning with that awesome chord. And me and Lee talked about it. We don't know what that chord is. If you know it, send something out there. We get that powerful title track for this album. The bongos on this are infectious and ridiculous. And also some great cowbell, which I admit I'm a sucker for. I love me some cowbell. George Harrison's making full use of his newly acquired Rickenbacker 12-string guitar, which, oddly, though, the piano solo by George Martin is higher in the mix than his solo. I love the counterbalance between Lennon's vocals and Paul's during the bridge. Just a flat-out perfect song. One of their best songs ever. Right on. I put a good opening track. I like the congas and how the acoustic-sounding guitars have not quite a heavy edge, but a rocking, not focused sound. It's a catchy song, and this is one of my favorite periods of the Beatles. Okay. Yeah. And now for I Should Have Known Better. It's a nice song. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's a so nice dangerous. song. I like Neil Young's early songs with Buffalo Springfield better, but not a tremendous amount better, but still a bit better. Yet, I can enjoy this song. It's pleasant. What do you think? Well, interestingly, interestingly to me, in the film at this point, they're on a train. And this song is mimed in the film. as it, And it's interesting because it has a bit of a train railroad type sound to it. From the harmonica to the way the acoustic guitar is played here. And it's so a John Lennon. John Lennon, spoiler alert, folks. This is John Lennon at his peak, maybe. As far as a pop songwriter, I mean, he's on fire on this album. From, you know, from the harmonica... And all that, it's just so good. And we don't even get a McCartney backing vocal here, even though he does mine one in the film. The best thing here, hey, man, Lennon can write a nice little pop song, too. It's too easy to forget that with the context of their later work. Another highlight, and we're just the second track in. One of Lennon's better deep cuts. I have a feeling there's going to be a few more on this record. All right. What do you think of If I Fell? I listened to the stereo version, and I have to say, for this review, this is one where I do prefer the mono version, first of all. For some reason, the double, trapping, double tracking on the vocals on this version, it's not bothersome, but it isn't present on the mono version. And also... There's a point on this edit where McCartney's vocals crack 
on the backing vocals due to strain. So if you like mistakes, then this version is for you. All that aside, another lemon-driven song, and once again, bucking the trend that is Paul who writes the silly love songs. Uh, well, maybe tender love songs is a better answer. And uh, this is a love, lush love song for sure. And so far, Lennon is on fire on this album. I put, when it comes to the Beatles ballads, this is my jam. It's one of their best. I like the song a lot. It's one of my favorite early songs by them. Okay. Yeah. And now for I'm Happy Just to Dance with You. The guitar work is too busy for this song and doesn't suit it. I would prefer it if it was arranged more like If I Fell. But even though it gets second tier song status because it's okay but not great, Still, it is okay. What do you think? Well, Lennon considered this a throwaway, so he gave it to George. And it's kind of messed up because I quite enjoy this one. And apparently Harrison couldn't come up with something on his own for the album, which is a shame. I love the use of timpani at key points of the song. Plus, it's a welcome sound to get George on lead vocals and at least... He got one on this film, even though it's a throwaway for Lennon. One man's trash is another man's treasure, I guess. Ha. Huh. All right, well, what do you think of And I Love Her? Well, per McCartney, Harrison came up with all the cool guitar lead work on this one. And it probably would have been cooler if you would have gave Harrison a credit as well, but whichever. Uh, because Harrison's guitar work is fantastic on this. On a nylon classical guitar at that. McCartney was almost a wall in this record, if, if we, we'll get into it later. But we finally do get a McCartney pen tune on this album, and it has to be one of his best love songs at this point of his career. Give me this over yesterday, any day of the week. Excellent vocal, excellent guitar work, and we're back on track with another excellent song. Yeah, I put another of their best ballads and one of my favorite early songs by them. This really can't be beaten. Nope. Okay. Now for Tell Me Why. Okay. This would be much better if it were done by Petulia Clark. This song, done the way it is by the Beatles, sounds too silly. Not great. What do you think? Lennon's last song in the original film song, songs that was on the film, and this side of the soundtrack as well, and unfortunately, especially compared to his other tracks so far, a bit of a dud. Even against a throwaway he gave to George, and I'm so happy to dance with you, sure it has energy to it, somewhat Motown-ish, but something about it just doesn't work for me, probably because I think there are better songs on side two, which didn't end up on the film. Harrison's backing vocals are very flat at points. This, to me, is the only dud thus far, so I agree with you, Lee. Right on. What do you think of Can't Buy Me Love? Our second McCartney song at this point was also number one single of their 21 number one singles off this record. I mean, what can you say? I mean, can literally anyone hate this song or say anything bad about it? The original demos had a bit more of a bluesy feel to it, and what we end up with here is a pop rock perfection. Awesome double track guitar solo from Harrison on this one, not with the 12 string. He has had a chance to show off a bit here, which is always welcome. Another Beatles classic, and thankfully was also in the film. Right on. I put, this is a good song. It's also fun to play on the piano. Good riff and melody. Okay. Now for any time at all. Okay. I like this song. It's not one of their major hits, but I like it a lot. And it's one of their better early songs. What do you think? Well, now we're on the non-film songs portion of the album, the second side. 
And I can see why this one didn't make the cut. But that is for the film. As a song on its own, it's definitely formidable in its own right. Ringo's drums are fantastic. Maybe he's mad that this is one of the two albums he didn't get the lead vocal on. The production on this one is very standout. And we got George Martin laying down a piano solo. God, he was so important to this man. I love the ending of this one and the guitar sound with the reverb and the echo. Filler, but the good type. Hmm, okay. What do you think of All Cry Instead? One of my favorite songs on the album. And Pure Lennon. Interestingly enough, I could have heard Ringo try this one. It seems like it's in this style, but I guess John, he must have thought, nah, I sing it better and I'm going to do it. So who could argue? Also, that Lennon hallmark of looking inward instead of writing in the third person is right here. And I like introspective works, so it resonates with me. Lennon's vocals are fabulous and easily one of my favorite songs on the record. Okay, um, I put, this is filler and doesn't really do much for me. The arrangement wouldn't be what I would put on it. I'll pass. All right. Well, boo. Uh, yeah, oops, sorry. I, I guess I should it's talk okay. first. That way you would have said I didn't say it was my thing. favorite. No, 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 no. I, 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 I know, but but I mean, um, um, I, or, or, or I, I should have done what you've done and then catered to you. Instead of in, in vice versa. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm being funny. Yeah. Okay. Or I, or like I would say to my dad, I'm trying to be funny. And he'd say, yeah, you're trying. Very trying. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyway. Um, That's good. Yeah. That's anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now for um, things we said today. I put, I like this a lot. It has a kind of James Bond type of sound to it. I would be interested if Carmen McRae had done it. Not that her version would be better than the Beatles, but it might be as good. I dig this song. What do you think? Our last pure McCartney song. Three songs on this record. Everything else has been Lennon. And perhaps he was inspired by Lennon. 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 Lennon, using his own, you know, the Lennon playbook. Uh, McCartney goes out uh, his own box right here and brings this rather dark song, which isn't his normal mode. And we also just get George on backing vocals instead of Lennon. And it works well here. Another Dark Horse type song. And one of the better deep McCartney tracks in the catalog as well. It flat out rocks at points. I wish McCartney dug in this playbook more. Right on. What do you think of When I Get Home? This one, almost, and I mean almost, by hair, would have been one Ida said, cut, tell me why from the film songs, and add this one. But unfortunately, we haven't quite finished yet, so I can't quite go that far. But this one is better than tell me why. Lots of three-part harmonies, and even though George still sounds a bit off, it's at least comical what he does with his voice. Lennon is singing his ass off in this song. Is excellent? No. But it's a good album track, full of energy and fire. Okay, I put, the good parts of the song don't mix well with the not great parts, and the song becomes not very well written. It's filler, and not quite my bag. Okay, but I will say, I do like it better than Tell Me Why. So I agree you with go. you there. Okay, yeah. now for You Can't Do That. All right, I like this song. It's got a good catchy beat and melody, and they play it well. It's hip. What do you think? Well, we finally found a song I had to put in the film instead of Tell Me Why. It, and it was actually filmed for the film, and it was decided to be cut from it. John Lennon, it must be stated, is the MVP of this album by far. So if you're more of a, of a McCartney person, this album wouldn't be for you. And certainly not for the George or Ringo fans. Lennon is so confident on this one, 
and I love the call and response vocals throughout. Also, one of the few guitar solos Lennon committed to take on a Beatles song, and as he says, he makes it fucking howl and move. My favorite track on the album. Thank you. Right on. What do you think of I'll Be Back? What is so unfortunate is this song is so, so very good. And was probably left on the off the film due to having two ballads on the film. Did we get one? And this one isn't as poppy sounding as If I Fell, which was the other John song that was a ballad. Another song is started one way with a more up. It did. If you listen to anthology, it was more of an up tempo type song, and then they decided to make it moody and slower. Uh, Lennon, again, is as good as he would ever be, and McCartney is no slouch as well. This is just another fantastic song that he wrote that no other band at the time could write or pull off. And hell, many bands today could do something this good. This is my favorite early Beatles album, by the way. Right Easily. on. I put, about I'll Be Back, I put, this is one of my favorites of the Beatles' early songs. And aside from If I Fell, my favorite track on this album. It's great. And I loved playing it on piano. It's one of their great songs. And this, I would say, is yeah. probably equal with Please Please Me as my favorite of the early Beatles albums. Oh, I think this is the crescendo. Now, what's interesting about Beatles for Sale is the first track on that is fantastic as well, and then you just kind of went like the... Eh. But this was... The Beatles on fire, and they wrote this actually under a time crunch. Huh. This was written after the Ed Sullivan appearance. So this is how on fire this band was at the time. And I don't know that Lennon ever quite captured this pop sensibility, if you know what I mean. Yeah. After this. I mean, after that, yeah, yeah did he have phen phenomenal songs? Yeah. Mary, you might agree or disagree on certain songs, but but yeah, yeah. But I don't know that he wrote like this ever again after yeah. this period. And I hear you, you know. But easily my favorite out of I, I always break it down to please please me with the Beatles, Hard Day's Night, Beatles for Sale isn't like in a weird thing where it's it's. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what you think about that album. Like yeah, I'm not sure lower, what I think of it either. I, I'm it's like, in the um, lower portion for me. It's, it's when it, I used to uh, clean, clean my room and I would hear songs from it. It worked. Okay, well, what were you going to say? But, right, right. But I mean, you know, you had Health and then Rubber Soul Revolver and, you know, wherever you stand on that. And then you got Sgt. Peppers, which I like but i think it's too mccartney kind of like this album is too lennon for some folks maybe mm. but lennon was on fire on this album i mean yeah he had a couple duds but whatever uh, let me count these songs now i'm getting i get it mad let me figure this yeah. out one two three four five six yes i use notes folks seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, that's the EMI formula. 14. Huh. There were 14, capital. so I guess that on wherever I saw it, I counted 13 and heard 14. So whatever the case may be. Capitals was 12. So with the exception of the White Album, uh. and which was the double and Magical Mystery Tour, which EMI had took the U.S. version, the only one, and made it standard. Um, their standard albums were 14 drafts. So yeah, there you go. Right Billy right. Fury inspired John Lennon. Got his autograph. And uh, yeah. I'm so happy we got to review. And I, I think in the end, we kind of agreed. Yeah. 
for the most part on this album. Yeah, we did. So, right on. Which is fantastic. It's fun to play on piano, fun to play on guitar. Yeah. And uh, this is the Beatles in their peak as far as early Beatles. Oh. And I love early Beatles. So, yeah. There you go. Okay, well, well, I'm so glad we got to do it. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And this is Lee Grisman, Charles Trainer, and take care, everyone. Bye bye.